Like this goes to show Tyler Technologies, they did a terrible job at setting up these websites for their jurors. And so like, as a result, there's a security flaw that it was found. Like, it's not like it's the most technically challenging security flaw. And I'll explain why, but a lot of names were exposed for potential jurors and it's dozens of juror websites and basically it allowed an attacker to get information on cases in California, Illinois, Michigan, and a whole bunch of other states. The way it was done was an absolute joke. So since jurors are issued a unique number to identify them, right? And these numbers are usually signed to them when they are entered into the system. So, and it's done sequentially. If you have one number, just add one. You just get, keep trying. <laughs> and the beautiful thing about this, you could brute force this thing. Yeah. And the site didn't stop from flooding the pages with requests or to set up an attack to get all this information. The jurors, that's that's be, we're talking the names, their full names, their date of birth, occupations, email addresses, cell phone numbers, home addresses. If you know the name of a juror that's on a particular Oh my trial, God, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. You, you can manipulate the outcome of that trial. And that's scary. And you just threaten family, threaten them and just do it. And people, they'll just bow down to it. And then instead of somebody being guilty, oh, well, they're not guilty. Why? Because I don't want my family to get whacked. Like you mentioned, it's dangerous for the people who are, um, who are exposed. How is there not a measure in place to prevent that? Given that you're numbering sequentially, it, this, this is like the most rudimentary security feature you need to have in your backend and they don't have it. Like, this is like, that should be. That's criminal negligence, in my opinion. You had one job.